Welcome to Out Motorsports, the channel for cars as you are. My name is Jake and I am here in Atlanta, Georgia. I am here with other Jake and not Jake. And they are from Gears and Queers and they have never towed a trailer before. So we are here to do a multi-part series in part with support from Chevrolet to talk about how to tow a trailer for the first time. This is the first part in the series where we're gonna run through the basics and the numbers of these vehicles so you can know what you need to tow. And then we're actually gonna go through how to hook up a trailer and the whole process. And today we've got my trusty, broken sometimes, 1999 ML320 to tow around. So with that, let's talk about these two Chevys behind us and what they're rated to tow. So well, let's be the first horse in the stable. This is a 2022 Chevy Suburban with a 6.2 liter V8. So that brings us 420 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque and a 10-speed auto, which was co-developed with Ford, but we won't touch on that too much. Now this one is a four-wheel drive Suburban. This is an RST. And the interesting thing with tow ratings with these is that it's dependent both on how many drive wheels you have and if you have the max trailering package or not. So the max tow capacity of this one, being a non-max tow truck with four-wheel drive, is 7,400 pounds. But that's not the only thing that matters. Let's go to the back of the truck and we'll show you what else matters. Follow. Okay. So, as you can see here, we've got the hitch exposed. There's a plastic uh, beauty cover that kind of completes the bumper look. So this is just a standard trailer hitch. This is uh, the, the most normal hitch you'll see on pretty much anything. It's a two inch receiver. So terminology wise, this little square bit is called the receiver. The other important thing to note with towing anything is tongue weight. Um, if, if anyone's watched more of, of my tow videos, I talk about tongue weight a lot because tongue weight is how much weight the trailer puts right here on the, the hitch, basically the back axle of the vehicle. So uh, typically, unless it's stated otherwise, you can just assume 10% tongue weight is what is safe. In the United States, that's what we design our trailers to have and to support within 10 and 12 percent. Interesting. Okay, a lot of numbers, a lot of figures, a lot of things. 10 percent is easy, you just move the decimal point over. So, 740 pounds of tongue weight. I can do that. <laughs> right, right, you just cut a zero off. So, 740 pounds of tongue weight, 7,400 pounds of tow capacity. Uh, so, the final number here, and this is really important with something like a Suburban, is payload. Because how many times do you want to bring all your friends with you wherever you're going? Yeah. You have friends, I know that. A few. More than just Behind us. the camera. Yes. We might have a couple others. Anyway, this Suburban can seat, what, seven or eight people? Right? Yeah. The problem is, you can't always have a trailer loaded up and put seven or eight people and all your stuff right. in the car and be within Chevy's specified uh, number. And that number is called payload. So... We look in the driver's door, not whack it on the trailer. You'll see right here, there is a sticker. And this is on any new car that's sold or any even older car. Right, that's um, like tire pressures and things like yeah, that. Yeah, it talks about tire pressure and you know what they recommend the pressures be. But the fun part actually comes in right here. It says the combined weight of occupants and cargo should never exceed. And then it's got a, a weight figure in pounds and kilograms. That is your payload. So in this case, it is 1,610 pounds, which sounds like a lot, right? Right. Okay, well, I just told you your tongue weight of the trailer can be 740 pounds or a little bit more. Oh, okay. We'll take 740 away from 1610. Yeah. You've got a lot less weight that you can put in here. Yeah. Okay. So, I didn't know that. I thought payload, honestly, just a, I mean, like, I should have known that, but I always, like, thought of it as, like, the bed weight of a truck. Right. I mean, but it's obviously the same thing. It's that weight within the vehicle. Right. And if, if you okay. have a pickup truck, that is a, a, also a very important number. Gotcha. But payload, in particular, is the weight of occupants and cargo. Okay. You know, you have to really think, are we going to have five people in here and all of our luggage and a big camper to go camping yeah. or truck and trailer, you know, gotcha. trailer in a car for track weekend or whatever? you may not be able to do it. Gotcha. 1,600 pounds is actually pretty good payload for something this size. Okay. Um, I've seen other larger body-on-frame SUVs that are like 1,200 to 1,400. What I'm curious about is we'll go over to the Silverado and see if it's higher or lower. Yeah, I mean, what do we What do we think it's gonna be? Uh, I'm gonna say higher, because truck, right? That's what I always assume. Okay. I have been proven wrong in the past. Let's go. Thank you, Jake, for that handoff. And now Jake and I will talk about this. This is a 2022 Chevrolet Silverado LTD. It's called that because the new Chevrolet Silverado is coming soon, but this is kind of a stopgap in between that. This one is an LTZ, 
has the 3 liter Duramax engine, which is the only inline six engine architecture of this diesel engine segment. But with that Duramax engine, you get 277 horsepower, 460 pound feet torque, which is the same as the Suburban. And both of these vehicles have the same 10 L80, 10 speed automatic transmission. This being a Z71, this has some goodies on it that are a little more suited to off-roading, namely the tires. These are an all-terrain, whereas the Suburban has a highway-focused all-season. We'll talk about why that matters in a second, but that is one big thing you want to think about when towing. Now, again, just like the Suburban with tow capacity, it's going to vary based on the trim you get, the engine you pick, a whole bunch of different things, but this particular model is rated for 9,500 pounds, we said, right? Cool, so quite a bit more about 2,000 pounds, give or take, more than the Suburban sitting next to it. And we'll talk about why. Let's come on back to the rear of it. So again, payload. Now, Jake thought that this would have more payload than the Suburban. He did. What's I your did. thoughts? Before we, before we look at the sticker, I'm not looking at it. Um, interesting, because this seats less people, mm -hmm. but truck. Rated to tow more weight. Rated to tow more weight. I'm, I'm curious. You did say it has leaf springs? Yes. I don't know anything, so I'm going to say go ahead and tow more with it because it probably can. So the Suburban had 1,610 pounds of payload. We look in here, you're both wrong, 1,471 pounds of payload in What's the Silverado. Going What's going on with that? So of course there is a difference to be had in the type of vehicle. You know, This is a truck with leaf springs, that's a big SUV with coils. That can influence payload uh, and they just design that to hold more people all the time. But the other interesting thing is payload matters depending on the trim and options you have because every bit of weight you add to the vehicle takes away from the overall payload that the chassis as a whole can support at like the base platform level. So if this LTZ were a high country or another higher trim truck, it would probably have less payload. Interesting. If it was a work truck trim, it might have more payload. A case for the work truck. Get the base model. Get the vinyl floors. If you want a sunroof, that's extra weight. And how much do you think that weighs with the glass, the motor, the sliding assembly? That could be 100 pounds right there. So when you talk about payload, not every Silverado, not every Suburban will have these numbers that we're talking about. So it is important if you're going to buy one, find the exact vehicle you want or close enough to it, open the driver's door and look at this sticker. Because if you don't, all these numbers don't matter. So you mentioned that like this one being a Z71 having these like all terrains on it, that is important. Why is that? So obviously GM rates this truck to tow what it's rated for with these tires installed. But if you care about how the truck feels pulling a trailer, having an all-terrain versus having a highway tire matters because if you look at the tread blocks, these have a lot more space between them. And it's not necessarily going to matter with what we're towing today, but if you have like a really big camper or a big enclosed box trailer, if you want to reduce how squirmy it might feel, you're going to want a highway tire because the less space between the little treads or the blocks in this case, the less room everything has to, to shimmy around when you're going highway speed. And that matters if, you know, there's a windy day like today and you get pushed around a little. If you want the maximum control, your best tire choice is actually going to be a highway tire with a high load rating that can support everything. Interesting. All right, so towing capacity. I hear 9,500 pounds on the Silverado, and I'm like, that's got to be like four Miatas. But that's not the whole story. It's not, and this is, you know, kind of a yes and sort of answer. You have to always think about the trailer you're pulling. So in this case, this is a trailer we borrowed from my friend Matt. Uh, this is about 20 feet long. You would call this an open trailer because it's not a box. And this is going to weigh probably 1,900 to 2,000 pounds. Kind of always err on the, the high side for caution. Let's call it 2,000 pounds. So, okay, now you've got 7,500 pounds that's left with the uh, Silverado in particular. The other thing to think about is if you are renting a trailer, a lot of people go to our lovely and talented U-Haul to rent a car trailer. Now let me tell you, those trailers are shorter than this by probably 16 feet. Let's call okay. them 16 feet. They weigh like 2,200 pounds because they're made of a lot of steel. They're meant to be indestructible so people can like drive them over things and not break. But they're As really ones want to do. Yes. And uh, when we talk in our next video about how to load a car, we'll talk about how to manage your tongue weight and how much is put on the tow vehicle. But U-Haul trailers don't really let you do that. So stick around. That will be in the next video. But before we go there, 
tell me about what we're loading on the stream. Well, um, we are loading the pinnacle of reliability, my 99 Mercedes ML320. I don't think it's ever been on a trailer. It's usually broken down close to the repair shop. Right, 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 right. Um, but that weighs about like 4,300 pounds. Sure. And we know we've got about 2,000 pounds here. Um, that sounds like it would be putting us right at the Suburban's limit, but we'd still have a little bit of room to play with the Silverado. It would be close. It would be, it'd be about 1,000 pounds under the limit for the Suburban. Okay. But a lot of people on the internet, and everyone on the internet is always right, will tell you, oh, you never want to tow beyond 70% of your tow capacity and whatever. Before we leave, we're going to talk about something that sounds super unsexy, and it's called SAE J2807. I love her. Yes. I don't know what that means. She's one of our favorites. So the SAE is the Society of Automotive Engineers, and they have all these different standardized tests that the automakers will put their new cars through to get them certified or approved for whatever thing. So until about 2013, there was no standard test for tow capacity. That doesn't seem safe. Yeah, so if you go look at like a 70s Chevy Suburban, for example, Chevy rated them with like a naturally aspirated 350 cubic inch V8 to tow like 14,000 pounds. And let me tell you, that was like not a pleasant towing experience. I wasn't there for it, but I just know how that went. So what the SAE did was they said, okay, now we've got a standard tow rating. And here's the test. And part of it involves the Davis Dam, which is way out on the West Coast. And it's all around, you know, on a 100 degree day, can you pull your maximum stated tow capacity uh -huh. with the AC on full blast, with recirculate turned on, never going below 45 miles an hour, up a 20% grade for 45 minutes straight. Like, it's, it's some form of that. That sounds like my daily commute. <laughs> right, right. I mean, around here. Yeah. So... The important thing to keep in mind is newer vehicles, um, I think Ford was one of the first followed by GM to adopt that standard around 2013 to 2015. Any new truck or SUV you buy today will follow that SAE uh, testing procedure to get that tow capacity. So, you know, I put a little bit more faith in newer trucks. So when we say, okay, we're approaching the Suburban's tow capacity, fine, but I know that Chevy tested it and rated it doing all of those ridiculous things, and they were able to certify it at 7,400 pounds. So like in an extreme case, so we're-, we're Exactly. Even if we get to that number, unless we're doing that situation, we're probably right. okay. Right, and there's other factors with that test as far as you know handling and braking and emergency maneuvering. But uh, in general, I put a lot more faith in manufacturer tow ratings now because they're put in place by a lot of really smart engineers that like, I think we're very smart but we're not automotive engineers. That is that is true. We are not. So uh, I just trust them more than I trust some rando on the internet who probably doesn't know about the tow standards at this point. So do not fear. Look at your manufacturer's tow rating and payload and all that good stuff, and you're probably good to follow. All right, that is it for the first video of this little mini series. So we've talked all about the numbers that matter when you're towing with an SUV or a truck. And now let's talk about what we're gonna do next. The next video, we will show you guys how to hook up a trailer. One other hookup advice, not here. Yeah, go to And if you want to see more content from queer automotive YouTube creators, then subscribe to Out Motorsports, subscribe to Gears and Queers, and we'll see you in the next one. See you later. Bye.